Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how I made the Super Gunnarang from Borderlands. I started out with my pattern I made on the PC with color-coded sections to know the height of each part. I separated the gun into two parts. I measured the gun as a rectangle and marked it down. I transferred the measurements to EVA foam and cut out the right amount using the barrel as the thickness reference. Make sure your blade is very sharp or new. I added two pieces of craft foam to complete the thickness. I cut out the part meant to be lower and traced it onto the foam. Then I cut it out for later. Now I applied contact adhesive to my EVA foam blocks. I waited for it to be dry enough and slowly, carefully, stuck it together. I repeated this till I had a nice block. Before gluing the craft foam, I traced the opening and marked the lines. I tested my wood burner on a scrap piece of foam to make sure I had the hang of it. Then I wood burned the lines into my main piece. Once that was done, I glued the red craft foam and moved on to the more elevated piece. To make a beveled edge, I used a sharp knife to cut out an angle. Once everything was marked and cut, I used a knife to carve the power symbol. Then I applied heat to melt the edges of it. Then I lined up my piece and glued it on. Using a Dremel, I fixed all the edges. I marked how far the angle had to go and dremeled it accordingly. I heat sealed the foam using a heat gun. I marked the detail locations and the lines. Using a straight edge and the same knife and heat gun technique, I opened up the lines. The first detail piece came from two small rectangles. I cut the center out and trimmed it shorter. That way, when I put it back, it's lower than the original piece. I dremeled the edges. Once that was ready, I glued it on. The extra small detailing was cut out of craft foam and glued on using a glue gun. For the rivets, I also practiced on some scrap EVA first. Using a sanding bit on the Dremel, I pushed it into the foam with confidence. I used another Dremel bit to carve the lines in at the top. The other parts were made using the same techniques. Now it was time to add the barrel. I cut it out of my pattern to have a perfect circle and used the cut and heat method from before. The bottom frame also used the same techniques, measure, cut, and glue. I rounded the edges with a Dremel. For this cut and heat method, I also used a push stick to help define the lines. Once the base was ready, I glued it on. Now it was time to make the grip. I pinned it to some EVA and cut it out. I folded the top part and traced it again twice. Once glued on, I dremeled the dangle into the two outer pieces. I measured the detailing on the front and cut out some craft foam. I marked where I needed to cut. Once cut out, I glued it on. All other detailing used the same techniques as before. I glued the grip and the rest of the frame together. The top piece was made with warbler to ensure that it would be sturdy enough to be packed up. I used wood filler to clean up any seams left over. Then I primed it all with wood glue, but you can also use many other primers. To begin the paint job, I based it all out in black. Then I layered on the brown. I patched up any of the black spots that got other colors on it. I used lighter colors to add highlights to the edges. Then I layered on the silver. For the tribal lines, I made them all out in white to start. Yellow isn't a strong enough pigment to look bold in one shot. I layered it on top of the white, followed by orange. I mixed a purple for the glowing parts. Using black oil paint, I darkened the cracks and wiped the excess with a Scott towel. This will give your details definition. 
To add more definition, I use a silver marker to add highlights. Once all the oil paint is dry, I took the gun outside to varnish. It took three layers until I was happy with the result. Once dry, you have your very own Super Gunnerang. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.